Ostroev and I'm glad you come to my 125th webinar which is called Typical Plans in Nidorf Sicilian. Please let me know if the sound and video quality is good. I'm uh, streaming this webinar on both platforms, uh, Twitch and YouTube. You can uh, find the recordings later, I think tomorrow. By the way, guys, I've uh, published two new videos on my YouTube channel, so I'm sure this is what you should definitely watch. One of them is called uh, How to uh, Defend Properly and Avoid Getting a Checkmate. The other one is devoted to attack, how and when to attack. Mm -hmm. So we are waiting for more attendees to come. Okay. Guys, please uh, tell me if the sound is good. I see the video is good, but what about the sound? In a few minutes, we are going to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start actually. Uh, okay, so what? Uh, let's first talk about what positions. Uh, what positions I'm talking? So neither actually is two type of uh, the pawn structure. One is this with the pawn on d5. The other one is this with the pawn on e4. So sometimes you capture on d5 with the pieces, sometimes you have to capture on d5 with the pawn, and then, uh, of course, the plans change. Uh, oh. So, in general, here, for example, if you have such a pawn structure, the main plan is to pressure the pawn on d6. We are not talking about this in game. Of course, I'm sure you assume there are a lot of pieces on the board. I'm just demonstrating the pawn structure and I had to uh, put the kings here because um, Lee chess doesn't uh, allow me to set the position without kings. So here White's plan is to attack on d6 and occupy the d5, try to control it somehow. Black's task is to play f5 and undermine the pawn on e4. If speaking about this type of the position, then uh, black still uh, tries to initiate a kingside attack with f5, maybe f4, and maybe with the g-pawn moves, uh, while uh, white has a diff different task. d6 is no longer a weakness, and the best strategy is to play c4, b4, and uh, somehow try to play c5 to create two passed pawns or at least the passed pawn on the d file. Uh, 
How to do this? This is what I'm going exactly to demonstrate with these several games examples. So, for example, uh, this is uh, the game between Alexander Grishchuk and uh, Zhang Zhong. e4, c5, uh, knight of 3, d6. The most typical move order when a6 is played on the fifth move and f3 the maybe the one of the most popular responses uh, later alexander grishchuk suggested knight b3 that i uh, follow so this is uh, the line i play but i before that i was playing f3 f3 e5 knight comes to b3 bishop e6 bishop e3 bishop e7 and queen d2 the idea Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for letting me know. Yes, it's definitely an old page. Yeah, it was my mistake. I didn't figure out it. Uh, sorry. No, <laughs> that's why let's start from the very beginning. So, neither is these two positions. These two pawn structures, I mean. One with the pawn on d5, the other one with the pawn on e4. When there is a pawn on e4, uh, white's task is to pressure the pawn on d6 with white pieces and also control the d5 occupied with some pieces to block the pawn, to gain more space. Black's task is to play f5 and uh, undermine the central pawn. Here, white should play c4, b4, c5 to create a passed pawn and black uh, still continues with the kingside attack playing f5. These are the most typical plans. And uh, let's first start with uh, the games. Uh, so first is the game between Alexander Grishchuk and Zhang Zhong played in 2001. e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and uh, a6 here. Uh, well, uh, before uh, that I was playing f3 like it was played in this game, however then I realized that maybe knight b3 right now is quite helpful. The idea of this move is that after e5 I can play bishop g5 earlier and fight for the control over the d5 square right away. So I don't need f3. And if I play bishop e3, knight b3 and uh, then bishop g5, I lose a tempo. So that's why uh, nowadays I stick to knight b3, but of course this move also has some disadvantages, especially if they decide to combine um, Nidorf with uh, dragon and to transpose to Dragadorf, g6, bishop g7, knight bd7, and so on. Okay, f3 is a good move. Well, I have a very, uh, no answering your question, how do I counter Sicilian? I have a very strong repertoire depends on the line uh, that uh, black gonna play against me and uh, well usually I no, against dragon I play Yugoslav attack against uh, Khan Sicilian I play Marek Zibind and again neither if I play knight b3 as the sixth move okay uh, e5 of course knight retreats to b3 bishop e6 bishop e3, bishop e7, queen d2 and in this position black decided to play h5 which is not a common move but at the same time is quite uh, playable because it stops g4 uh, two other moves in this position are knight bd7 and castling h5 is the third popular move which uh, shows actually a good statistics Uh, only in 23% of all games white wins, 17% uh, are winning for black and in 60% of all games the game ends in a draw. So, 
but actually it's considered to be not the best move according to the engine. Well, uh, here White decided to play a4 to stop the counterplay on the other side. Knight bd7. How would you continue? Do you think it makes sense to castle queen side? Or develop the bishop and castle king side? What do you think? Okay, I just want you to know, guys, that I'm watching, uh, I'm looking to all your comments you uh, publish on both platforms, on uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube. By the way, those of you who didn't watch my recent uh, posts about how to defend and how and when to attack, I kindly recommend you to watch these two videos, just a sec, let me share the link with you. Uh, it's just while you are thinking about the move that white should play in this position. So this is uh, my newest uh, video about how and when to attack. And uh, if you watch it to the very end, uh, you'll find the link to uh, how to defend properly and avoid getting a checkmate. Okay, so Parallax suggests bishop e2 and castling, and yes, I agree with you, but before that you should do something. And this something is a5. This move uh, allows white to occupy more space on their queen side prevents b5 of course uh, and knight b6 because the knight on b6 successfully attacks the d5 pawn for example when the knight jumps there bishop takes pawn takes knight b6 and the pawn is hanging so it's difficult to protect it so a5 rook c8 bishop e2 Queen c7, uh, castle, castle. So even with the h5 move, it's okay for black to castle. Uh, black mainly is going to play on the uh, king side in this position. King h1, rook fd8. And now I want you to suggest a plan for white. This is approximately an equal position. Uh, very complicated. Both players can play for a win. What would you suggest for white? Oh, while you are suggesting the moves, I'll try to answer your question. What's your opinion on the Jukopiana Krause variation? I don't know. Uh, I don't know Krause variation. So maybe if you s tell me the move order, I'll answer this question. Or maybe in Russian it sounds in a different way. Okay, so what which plan would you suggest? Bishop g5 to fight for the d5 square. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it, the, the, the problem is that the knight is here. So if you play bishop g5. Ah, there is something wrong with this move. They can play d5, and after e takes d5, actually bishop takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, and this bishop is under the attack. And if bishop takes e7, knight e7, black simplified and equalized the position. Uh, 
Okay, perfect. So, and uh, yeah, 91. 91 was played with the idea to relocate the knight and also to use the b-pawn. Uh, h4, rook d1. Oh. h3 doesn't make sense after g4, the pawn is a weakness. So, knight c5 was played. And uh, while the c file is blocked, uh, white decided to play knight d5 because after this exchange, the pawn is not hanging. So it's always a question, which piece to capture, uh, the bishop or the knight? Well, uh, here, you sh I mean, if you are black, you should decide. If knight captures, pawn captures, then is this bishop good? Bishop captures, pawn uh, captures, is the knight good? So what can I do with this knight? In this position, the knight on f6 is definitely better. That's why it's better to keep it. Uh, then this knight goes to h5 with the idea of the king's side attack with f5 and so on. The only uh, bad moves that was uh, played here is rook d8. The rook would better stay on the f8 square. So, but at the same time, white starts their attack b4, knight d7, c4, f5, and c5. Because in case of d takes c5, it's d6 just. So black decided to ignore and play with the other knight to f6. What do you think? How white should continue? You see, well, there are pawns attacking it. The bishops are quite good. White may be looking for some tactical strikes, probably. So what do you think? Okay, yeah, um, hello to everyone who recently joined our webinar. We are talking about typical plans in Nidorf. So bishop c4 to set up, yeah, a discovered attack, not a pin, but a discovered attack. Well, that makes sense, but it works only in case if they take, but they are not going to take. <clears throat> C4 uh, also bishop c4 allows you to play c6, but actually you can play c6 right away with the idea of bishop b6 and bishop a6. For example, take there. What then? Maybe knight d5. Then bishop c4. So you gain a pawn back. You also threaten with bishop b6. For example, knight f6. Just bishop b6 is enough then you can continue pushing your a pawn so after c6 they reacted with rook f8 but b5 the idea of b5 is to create a passed pawn on the a file So a takes b5 was played in the game, bishop takes b5, and because black wanted to continue their queen side, king side attack, they played bishop d8 to let the queen join uh, the uh, attack, the king side. c takes b7, bishop, queen takes b7, and bishop c6. So from uh, c6, bishop also protects the pawn on d5. Queen f7, and after a6, the position is winning. 
but there are some tactical opportunities for black. They play the four, which makes sense, and this move, bishop f2. And uh, here they decided to continue with e4, because if f takes e4, it's knight takes e4, and after queen e1, white loses the game. For example, queen f5, something like that is a huge threat in this position, so rook a3 to stop it. Anyway, knight goes there. If you take this knight, h takes g3, you have to sacrifice a lot of material, because uh, they are threatening with they are threatening to take here and if bishop takes then pawn takes and now queen h5 queen h2 is a mate because the f file is open the king cannot escape so that's why white shouldn't accept the sacrifice but should play king g1 however then black opens the position with h3 and then Bishop b6 to distract the queen and continue with queen c2 threatening to deliver a checkmate. So g takes h3, but queen d1 just and queen f1 then with a mate. So queen c2 and you are threatening with uh, two threats, there is nothing they can do to avoid it. So that's why the pawn on e4 shouldn't be captured. Instead, white continues with a7. Knight g3 and h take g3 is too risky. Because of queen h5, queen h2 and so on, for example. Knight e4, very important move. Because after f takes e4, f3 can be played. First queen h2, king f1, and then f3. And uh, white is in a trouble because of a mating threat of this, or maybe this and this. So they lose the game. For example, in case of bishop g3, it's uh, king to bishop to b6 by the end. And the next move is, of course, queen g2. So you cannot capture on g3 with the bishop, uh, with the pawn, you have to capture with the bishop. h takes g3, queen takes f4, queen h5, h3. Well, black still needs to expose the position of white, so they take there, queen takes there, and here they play their last chance, knight e4. Unfortunately for them, this move doesn't work. Why? Black, white just captures here, knight f2, king g1, bishop b6, and what do you think? What is the only move which allows white to win the game? Because if they play a8 equals queen, it's just knight d1, king goes there and uh, checkmate with rook f1. So what do you think white should do in this position? to avoid getting the checkmate and uh, uh, win the game because of the extra material. Yeah, king of one is the only move. If knight d1, the king escapes. Knight h3 was played in the game, but the king still escapes, this time to e1, to avoid any extra checks. So knight f4, and after queen f3, black realized that there is nothing they can do because the king escapes to c2, the c file is closed, so they cannot do anything. Uh, what's, uh, what was wrong in this game for black? Well. Maybe in this position they'd better, well, maybe instead of knight c5, they'd better play something else. For example, just rook e8, maybe rook f8 to keep the rook closer. 
because the knight is more helpful here so it stopped bishop b6 and the knight on c5 later became the object of the attack so that was the main mistake which allowed um, uh, white to advance these two pawns with tempers and in this position uh, this was also a kind of a mistake that better play something else maybe f4 maybe g5 g4 and so on or h3 but uh, this move uh, moving the knight away from the queen side didn't allow um, didn't no, allowed white to succeed with their attack on the queen side and uh, take the advantage of the uh, dynamic uh, tactical motives of their position so such as bishop b6 bishop takes a6 as well okay the next example demonstrates how black successfully no not this one maybe this one yeah this one uh, this example successfully demonstrates a typical plan for black. This time uh, the move order was different, but later the game transposed to one of the typical and neither of positions. So in in fact it's it's Chivinigan Sicilian, not neither. Castle Queen side, Bishop D7. Bishop b3 and b5 with the idea of the uh, queen side attack. Knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, bishop d4, which it actually doesn't make much sense. The only goal is to take there, but I don't know what for. Bishop e7, bishop f6, bishop takes f6. Now the bishop is quite good. Uh, however, white had uh, knight d5 in mind. The idea is that if the pawn takes, pawn takes there, and after that, this bishop is better than the dark squared uh, bishop of uh, black. But uh, black understood it, and in this position they could uh, maybe play queen d8, but instead they took on d5, which is also a good move. e takes d5 e6 is hanging so the only option is to play e5 and uh, the bishop is blocked uh, this bishop is blocked as well so what do you think which one is better So the black or white bishop, which one is better? Which can uh, probably... Um, well, you know, when you play the end game with uh, bishops of opposite color, it's likely to be a draw. And your main task is to attack enemy pawn weaknesses. However, if you play the middle game, your main plan is to use your bishop to initiate a, an attack on the enemy king. This is how you we can say you play with extra piece because the enemy bishop cannot cover the squares you attack with your bishop that's why he has here bishop on f6 is better it has more chances to join the attack either through this diagonal or through these rook d3 was played queen d7 maybe not obligatory but to be able to protect on b5 and later play a5 a4 so this is how they decided to save a tempo and then save a tempo on castling and continue with a5 to provoke a3 castle rook c6 but a4 the bishop has to move to the uh, a2 square and what do you think how to play them yeah here our team was absolutely correct this bishop on b3 became the object of the attack 
that's the main disadvantage of white's position well here you can play b4 to close the bishop so a takes b4 but a3 and uh, if they take a rook comes to a3 with a direct attack for example how to play king b1 king b2 but then queen a7 and uh, well if the bishop moves it's just e4 c3 rook comes there in intending to sacrifice on b3 and play queen goes there or maybe intention of rook a2 right away so it's absolutely losing position uh, the queen cannot help because of queen f2 so taking on a3 is a bad idea this is what white realized and they played b3 blocking their bishop forever e4 so black sacrifices another pawn but takes the advantage of uh, their bishop now in fact they are a piece up well, queen e4 allows uh, black to activate their rooks rook e1 was played g6 it's a it's an escape square for the king f4 uh and passan queen takes f3 and rook a to e8 so what does it mean why this rook actually it doesn't matter which rook because if rook takes e8 it's queen e8 uh, threatening with a main rook d1 was played bishop g5 check king b1 and now white opened the position in the center and is able to join their pieces into the attack with this move queen f1 queen e7 uh, one of the ideas here is to triple and continue with rook e1 so rook c4 rook e8 rook cd4 that's the reason why they move their rook back and uh, in this position uh, yes you may continue with this move but then queen f3 so queen e5 queen c4 rook e1 and now there is nothing that can stop black from delivering a checkmate in the game it was played queen d3 could you please tell me how to deliver a checkmate in this position i'm sure you can find it rook takes d1 uh, then queen takes d1 and what then Queen d4, rook e1. Yeah, that's right. So rook takes d1, queen takes d1, queen d4, and if they take, uh, rook e1 leads to a checkmate. Now, instead of queen d3, they could play something else. Maybe let's play c3 move or let's play g4 move. Well, if so, it's just rook d1 with queen b2, of course. So c3 makes more sense in this case. But queen f5. Uh, if king goes there, it's queen c2, threatening the mate on b2. If, uh, well, queen d3, rook d3. Queen d3, it's rook d1. Same thing happens in case of rook d3. So it's a losing position anyway. And in this position, there is nothing that can be done. So what did we uh, find in this game? The bishop on b3 was a bad bishop. It was restricted. Moreover white um, white's bishop became the object of the attack so it means that these pawns can be advanced with the tempo and uh, uh, finally the bishop had to stay on a2 where it doesn't participate in the game but another bad thing about the bishop is that it uh, stops the king from escaping 
However, it's not enough uh, to just force the bishop to get to a2 and uh, make it a kind of a big pawn, uh, but uh, you should open the position on the king side to create a counterplay. If you still keep playing on the queen side, you will be unable to succeed because they are likely to continue with b5, b4 and activate the bishop somehow. So here e4 opens the diagonal and at least you can do this and enter his camp. But if the pawn is taken, then black rook joins the attack and uh, this is where uh, black could succeed, which they exactly played in the game. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Uh, <clears throat> I prepared two more games for you today. <clears throat> so then this game is about uh, the position when the pawn is only four. Uh, the game between Vladimir Rakopian and Alexander Morozevich. D4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, A6, so Bishop E3, which is uh, actually one of the possible options. F3 can be combined with Bishop E3. Sometimes Bishop E3 has its own plan like it was not here when after E5, White decided to retreat to F3. This is very uncommon. And uh, usually White uh, moves the Bishop to B3. Bishop e7, Bishop c4, but this is where they wanted to vacate the b3 square with uh, for, for their bishop. That's why they didn't play the knight there. Who can tell me how to deal with b5 move in this position? Okay, nice. Uh, I see only a few attendees left, uh, unfortunately. So maybe everyone is busy now. What do you think? Maybe we should make a break for summer. Anyway, next week I'm going to play a simul against a blitz simul against uh, no, everybody who comes. Okay, so b5, you can continue with bishop d5. Why? Because if they capture, well, well, the rook is trapped. And if they capture with the knight, you can capture with the queen. And again, the rook is trapped, so they have to sacrifice at least the knight. b5 doesn't work, so they castle, castle, queen c7. Now the bishop is under the attack, bishop b3, bishop e6. Queen e2 to be able to join the rooks. Rook fd1. Knight bd7. And this is how we reach this typical pawn structure with the pawn on e4. Your main pressure is to attack the d6 pawn. And this uh, time bishop g5 was played. Yes, there is a knight to, uh, to replace the knight on f6. But it still works. For example, if uh, h6, um, it was bishop f6, knight f6, and then maybe knight h4 with the idea of knight f5. But be accurate with knight f5 move because uh, even if you exchange on f5, you have to move the pawn out of the center. So it means less control over the d5. h6, bishop f, uh, actually b5 was played in the game, not h6, b5. And uh, white continued with knight e1. Looks like a weird move, but the main idea was to protect on c2. 
queen b7, bishop f6, knight f6, knight d5 now. And the main task is still to capture on d5 with the piece to make the d6 a weakness and also to block it. What black should play? Still they should play f5, try to undermine. Rook a d1, f takes e4, queen takes e4. Another move that deserves attention was f3, of course. But f3, f takes e4, f takes e4, the pawn here may become a weakness. Moreover, f3 weakens some duck squares in the white's camp. So rook c4, queen e2. Rook c8, pressuring on the c file, which is actually not the best move. Instead, they'd better continue with this. So rook c8, a3. b4, opening the position, a takes b4, rook takes b4, and b3. So the only weakness on, is on c2, but it's protected with the knight. However, the knight is quite passive. And uh, in this position, black decided, well, they decided they are stuck on the queen side, they should focus on the king side now and play this move, g3, to stop rook f4, because if this rook comes to f4, then it's um, kind of a problem the f2 will be hanging so while there is no prospect for the king side attack they still continue playing on the queen side and play a5 well it's not a sacrifice if this move is played it's bishop d8 bishop b6 with the idea to pressure f2 if knight d3 just rook e4 the queen retreats rook g4 threatening with this and then capture on f2. So this is where white could get into trouble. That's why they didn't capture this poison pawn on a5. Knight d3, uh, rook b5. What do you think? How white should play in this position to exchange rooks but still to uh, protect the d5 square and keep the control over it to prevent black from playing d5? So in this position, the best move is uh, knight f4. It's a discovered attack. The logic is that if rook takes d5, it's knight takes d5. That's why they just played rook b8 to keep the knight hanging. However, a rook b5, queen b5, and queen e4. If the knight is taken, the bishop is hanging then. Queen b4, check, king goes away because if king d goes there it's knight e6 with knight g7 and so on so king goes to h8 queen f7 if e takes f4 it's still queen e7 and uh, the d6 is a weakness for example f takes g3 h takes g3 and the pawn is hanging anyway let's say queen c5 queen d6 queen c2 cannot be played because of the back rank mate this is where white will be pawn up in the end game with good chances to succeed. But uh, I still believe uh, black has some drawing chances with, after rook c8 and king g8. So queen f7, queen b7 was played. But after knight e6, they are in the trouble. They have to give up the pawn. Somehow they need to protect the g7. So that's why this move. And uh, not this. Because after this move it's just rook d6. So bishop f6, queen takes queen and rook takes d6. So it's absolutely winning endgame, which white successfully realized. They rep ah, finally another pawn was lost on g7. The knight successfully escaped and uh, then uh, black decided to resign because they have no material to compensate uh, they have no uh, activity and initiative to compensate three pawn losses. 
So what did happen in the game? Uh, for the half of the game, the position was approximately equal, but then white controlled the d5 square and uh, relocated their knight with knight d3, knight e4, entered it with their queen into uh, black's camp and tried to create a uh, threat on the king side. As a result of the th this threat, the pawn on d6 became a weakness. So here, after bishop f6, the pawn is no longer protected and white just captured it to be able to play for a win in the end game. Okay, now another example of how black should play in such position. This is the game between Alexander Kavchan and Denis Hismatuli. One of the best ideas that uh, black should do in the position when the pawn is only 4 is to advance d6 d5. To be able to prevent it, uh, white usually takes on f6. Queen d3, castle, castle. Uh, here you should also understand that if instead of castling they played rook d1 with the idea to pressure the d6 pawn, you can even sacrifice it. Uh, a similar line is shown in my Paulson Sicilian course. Queen d6, then you have knight d4, breaking the connection between these pieces. So queen d8, rook fd8, uh, no, everything is hanging, so knight takes d4, pawn takes, this knight I should move to a helpful square, and it's not a4 because of rook c8 attacking there and threatening with b5. So it's knight d5, they give up the pawn back. And, uh, well, here black is okay. They have an isolated pawn, but the bishops are of the opposite color. So this is where they can successfully draw the game. If knight goes there, uh, then uh, rook ac8, as I mentioned, attacking in here. And after bishop d3, just, uh, well, b5, or maybe rook c6, then b5, to trap the knight. So they have to play b3 and escape. This is where black has a compensation because of the bishop pair. So castle, uh, knight c6, knight d5. This is how they stop us from playing d5. Bishop g5. The idea of this move is to first not to... Uh, let him capture on f6 in case if you decide to move the queen and second to capture the knight on e3 if finally this knight from b3 comes to e3 rook ad1 rook c8 c3 another good move could be c4 in this position to reinforce the control but every time c4 is played d4 becomes weak so c3 how would you play if you were black here f5 well f5 deserves attention f5 maybe knight e3 and after bishop e3 f takes e3 because they change exchange one of the pawns and then they put the other one to e4 and in fact there will be no kingside attack in such a case and if you play f4 in this position, which also makes sense, then knight comes to f5, so d6 becomes weak. So bishop takes, pawn takes, and uh, this is where this bishop can get to really good uh, squares and they can even sacrifice the pawn on f5. So I think white is better. That's why f5 doesn't uh, work. Uh, knight e7 instead, just to exchange the knight to be able to vacate the square and finally play d5. Well, for example, knight e7, bishop e7, knight d2, queen e5 to attack a2, a3, rook fd8. This position is fine. 
because d5 can be played on the next move. Knight e3, rook c6, knight d2, b5 to stop knight c4. Rook c6 was required to protect the pawn, of course. Knight comes to f3. And now black decided to take on e3 to get rid of um, the defender of the d5 square. So queen e3. If now they continue with d5, they simply lose the pawn on e5. That's why queen c7. a3. And this is where d5 can be played. Uh, well, no, d5 cannot be played because e5 is still hanging. That's why f6. Now e5 is protected and after any move d5 can be played. Knight e1 was played and d5. So this is how uh, black played and over overtook the initiative. This is the main goal. So when the pawn is only 4, your task is to get rid of the pawn on d6 and play d5. So, but of course, to be able to do that, you should get rid of the blockade. Well, here white was looking for a counterplay and played f4. He takes a 4. Oh, passing the game into the end game isn't in uh, uh, white favor because their queen has to stay and protect the e4. For example, if queen takes queen, uh, then knight g6, the rook has to move away and the e4 is hanging. That's why rook f4. Knight g6, anyway, rook comes back. D takes e4, the queen has to take. And this is where black shows their activity. Bishop b3. Rook d4. And the e6 square is actually vacated for the rook. Queen g4. Well, where to move the queen? Maybe d3 was a better spot, but then rook f8. So queen uh, g4. Rook f8 is still a good move in this position. But they are able to get rid of this pin with knight d3. Queen g4, knight e5 was played. Queen g3, queen e7, adding some pressure on the e file. Knight f3 they exchanged and uh, rook e8. Bishop f1, rook e1 pinning it with the idea of bishop c4. This is where white played a critical mistake, uh, after that they lost the game. The best move they could do was just g3. And after, let's say, bishop c4, they can escape with king g2. It's not a big problem. Uh, white is just uh, slightly worse, but actually this is a playable position. But after h3, the king no longer protects on c1 and actually uh, some ideas of queen e5 can be played. So bishop c4, and if king h2 is just queen e5 right away. Because if queen e4, the f1 bishop is not protected enough because the rook will be pinned. And if g3, you just take on f1 and continue with this, taking the b2 pawn after. Well, if queen e5 and king back to g1, uh, you can just uh, reinforce your position, maybe play this move, because if the queen goes away, you can capture here with it. No, you have more attackers, for example, queen e4, uh, queen takes e4, rook takes f4, and rook b1. Then if b4, these two pawns are weak. So bishop c4, rook d1 was played. Queen c5, pinning it. B4 doesn't make much sense. Now the queen, uh, well, the queen goes to g5. Rook e1, rook takes e1, king h2, and queen now goes to e5, and uh, g3 doesn't help. After bishop f1, rook takes f1, and rook e3, uh, they lose one of the pawns. So it was a check delivered, but the check didn't help because uh, then the, um, even if the check repeats, the king just successfully escapes to g6. Almost the same thing happened. After king g1, uh, black played 
King g6, that was a prophylaxis with the idea of rook d2, queen e2, and the checkmate on this second rank. Queen e7, checks, rook checks, king g2, and now queen e4, threatening with rook e2, regardless of which move is played. For example, queen f2, it's still rook e2. g4 was played, but no, it's not enough. Check, king goes to g3, queen e5. If this move it's just rook e3, they have to sacrifice the queen. If uh, king h4, that was actually played in the game, then what do you think? What was the final move after which white resigned? Rook g2? Well, yeah, rook g2 looks good. Well, actually, king h6 was played in the game, but rook h uh, with the idea of g5. But rook g2 is even better with the idea of queen g5. And queen e1 as well. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Okay, guys. So, uh, what you may learn from here. So, here, uh, black got rid of the blockade, they exchanged on d5, and finally they were able to play d5 themselves. And because of it, they were able to gain some initiative. Even the counterplay with f4 didn't help. After the position became open, uh, black were prepared better for this position. So they took the initiative, their pieces were um, uh, on most, on almost the most active positions and then they uh, initiated the attack on the king as a result they could gain a pawn on the flank but uh, actually after a few mistakes white lost the game if white would play properly they of course would draw the game okay so from this webinar you learn typical plans let me repeat it for you in these simple examples so when the pawn is on d5 in Nidorf white intends to play c4 b4 and c5 try to create a passed pawn at least on the d file maybe also obtain some other tactical ideas and black in this case continues with f5 to initiate a king side attack especially if the king is here if the king is not here it's a6 b5 and some attack on the king on the queen side in this position, when the pawn is only 4, white tries to control the d5 square and successfully attack the backward pawn on b d6. Well, black still tries to play f5. Or get rid of the blockade on d5 and uh, continue with d5 to exchange the pawns and open the position. This is how they get more room to maneuver with their pieces and usually black are better prepared for this breakout in the center. Okay, that was all I wanted to share on the webinar. So let me share the screen. I kindly recommend you to watch these two videos that I recently uh, uploaded how and when to attack in chess and how to defend and avoid getting a checkmate. I'm sure you can enjoy them. So this is the link to my YouTube channel. If you, uh, if you didn't, please subscribe. And uh, on the next webinar, I'm going to uh, conduct, uh, it, will be, it will be not a webinar, but a simul. I'm going to play Blitz with you. Uh, there was also a question about uh, Krause variation of uh, Italian game. Uh, 
Uh -huh. So let me quickly answer this question. I'll create another chapter here. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6. bishop c4 bishop c5 um, c3 well c3 this is what i played uh, knight f6 d4 it takes d4 c takes d4 well i don't think this is a good idea here i play e5 then uh, d5 bishop b5 and uh, knight e4 this is what i played myself as for this line c takes d4 i'm not sure it's good for white bishop b4 bishop d2 Well, no. Knight e4. Bishop f7, king f7, queen b3, d5, of course, knight e5, king f6, f3. Well, king f6, well, what if they play king e6, actually? If king of six, I still, I believe you have some advantage. Rook e8 and then maybe castle in this position. This is why it is better. But if only black goes to e6, f3, let's say, uh, is a mistake because queen h4 comes. So king of six actually allows... Uh, black to equalize the position and queen b4 the most logical move will face with uh, probably just queen f8 to exchange and this is where you have to play approximately equal in game it's not a problem for black to have the king on the six in the end game with no queens on the board the risk of being checkmated is so low so you see actually if black plays properly uh, on move number 11 there is no advantage if they make a mistake then yes with f3 you can get some advantage okay thank you for your attention uh, hope to see you next sunday and if you have any questions especially about uh, private coaching you can always email me at tricks of chess at gmail.com you can also suggest topics for the webinars or uh, inquire about my courses or just anything else any suggestions or if you uh, want to ask me about something you can message me i'm sure i can find time to help you okay see you next sunday